I'm Alicia. <laughs> um, so I, I teach the older kids, uh, ranging from like ages six to eight right now. And we do academics, obviously. We do math and language arts, science and social studies. Uh, we also work heavily on focus and patience. And being able to just like uh, interact with each other in a positive way. Um, two of the kiddos are on the autism spectrum and one has attention issues. So it can, it, it's an interesting uh, interaction to say the least, but uh, they're really thriving as far as socializing goes. And I have, I have experience with public schools and how that went for my own child. Um, Socializing in a public setting for kids that don't really pick up on socializing well. Um, it only taught him bad habits. Like did, none of the positive things he was doing was reinforced. So I really work hard to make sure I'm reinforcing positive socialization. Um, not just from the kid that is, is struggling, but also from the kids that aren't struggling. So making sure that they acknowledge the kids that are struggling when they are doing the right thing. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how things go for me. Um, mainly mainly focus and patience are the, the huge spiritual things that we have to work on with them. Why is focus and patience a spiritual thing? Well, without them, you're not going to accomplish anything. <laughs> like it's, a, it's a pretty big concept um, and something that does not come very easily to these kids. So really being present um, and working on on their work wholeheartedly not letting their mind wander somewhere else while they're trying to do something um, it really teaches them to be in the moment um, to do this a, to the best of your ability doing your best on your work and they've realized quickly that like when they are focusing on it it goes by a lot quicker and they're able to get to the more fun things um, but also patience if they're not understanding things understanding that some things don't come easy to every person and that even though you don't you're not good at it yet and, and I focus on the yet like um, one of the kiddos says that a lot like I'm not good at this and I say yet you're not good at this yet you will get good at it you just have to be patient with yourself allow yourself the time to learn it and they do they each, they each learn really well they just they, they each work at their own pace that's all Thank you. Yeah. You have any other questions, Jay? What are the main differences between the public school and what we're doing here? What are the main differentiators that are really going to stand out as far as our kids' uh, evolutionary process? I didn't touch on why either. Spending more close time with each kid. So, there you go. So one of the things that uh, makes us a lot different than public school is we focus on the why they're doing things. So instead of just getting over it that like they dropped something on the floor, hey, you dropped that on the floor, why did that happen? And just getting them to recognize, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to the, the pencils that I left all over the table, you know? So I should pick that up next time. I should clean up my space next time. Also like, oh, this person's crying. Why are they crying? Just getting them to focus on like why something is happening instead of just um, observing what is happening, but really understanding what is what is actually going on. How did, how did this happen? What action caused this result? And that's, uh, that's, that's something that the older kids have been working heavily on. It's, it's been a, a primary focus for us is um, understanding how their actions impact their environment and others and that's something that I don't think public school focuses on really at all like they don't really touch on that um, I don't think so They're just to clarify the older kids are six to eight years old. right six to eight years old yeah and we we get into that with the littler kids too but that is a concept that's pretty pretty high so it's it's harder for them to yeah. understand yeah. but the older kids are the six to eight year olds are able to, to understand how their actions impact others and how that really affects things around them. So we do focus on that. Um, another thing that we um, try to really hammer home with them is that man comes before machine. So they do get to 
play on electronic devices after things are done. They get to, um, you know, do just dance on the Nintendo or, you know, different things, but... But it doesn't take precedence. It doesn't take precedence. And if another kid is here and they're not, they're not enjoying that, we make sure to point out, like, hey, is this person enjoying that? No? Okay, well, man is more important than machine. We have to make sure that we're, so, we're socializing with these other kids, that everyone is included, and that we're placing their feelings before we're placing our value on this electronic device, which is, I would say, a pretty big issue in society today. Uh, definitely in our, our teens and young adults, so. It takes away from being present. Yeah, for sure. Another thing that we've really been working on with them is uh, developing their confidence and mm -hmm. making sure that they're applauding their own work. Mm -hmm. So for them to, it, it was really common for them to, to come to us and say, look what I made. And then seek like, to, yeah. to try to yeah. seek something like for us to compliment them. But now it's, it's to the point that they're bringing it to us and saying, isn't this great? Like they're, yeah. they're really building self-confidence and um, to be able to compliment themselves, that's really such a joy to watch. Well, it depends on what's causing the anger. <laughs> like, uh, external or internal? Yeah. <laughs> right? Is, yeah, is it the external? Are they, are they angry because they're trying to get out of doing something? Or are they, are they angry for, for some legit reason? Mm -hmm. um, something bothering them? Somebody takes something from them? Um, one, one of the biggest things uh, that I have learned while homeschooling is to really investigate why. <laughs> like, the same thing I'm teaching them, you know? Investigate why this is happening. What is causing that anger? And not just superficially, like, okay, somebody took his, his pencil, but would that really make him that mad? Like, what is causing that buildup? There's something, it's more than just a pencil, you know? So just investigating uh, the true cause of the anger and targeting the source, not just the superficial thing that, the effect, that, that yeah. may, may seem like what it is, but it, it isn't, you know? So it may present as him stealing a pencil or him getting upset because someone stole a pencil from him, but it's actually something much deeper and really getting to the, the, the deeper cause for what's causing that child to be angry um, will help you solve the true issue but that's different for each child so it's it depends on what what's causing the anger as to how we're going to deal with it and sometimes you can ask them what the right thing right thing to do like oh yeah they yeah can, for sure they and can figure they, they can they can answer that on their yeah. own for sure if that was the right thing to do they they're very quick to be able to say no that wasn't nice you know like <laughs> i know i didn't yeah. do the right thing but they don't really understand why they did it until you bring that to their awareness so really digging in and, and finding what's the true issue and bringing it to their awareness will help them to overcome their anger. By digging in, are you talking, are you asking them questions? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure, asking questions. Um, asking questions and noticing patterns. Really being observant of that mm -hmm. child as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, do they seem to have an ongoing issue with, <laughs> with uh, competitive games? Or do they have an ongoing issue with um, other kids finishing before they do or whatever it might be you know mm -hmm. if you notice a Comparing pattern you themselves can, to others right yeah. if you can find the pattern it's easier to find the source yeah beautiful thank you do you have something to add about the anger no no perfect yeah. Yeah, really oh i feel so good yeah. <laughs> like, nothing to add it was wow. beautiful well, thanks, ladies. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, I do have one more thing. Yes. Uh, reshaping mindsets as far as uh, certain things go. Like, um, there was one kid that had a, had a certain idea of what a leader would look like, and we really had to reshape that for him. Um, just understanding, like, the use of violence and how that doesn't serve um, the overall, overall goal, mm -hmm. the overall goal for that person even. Um, and he, he was able to identify that really quickly, but just reshaping little things in their in their mind, how they're viewing what a leader is or, or what a, a good person is, you know, reshaping that for them and, and getting them to understand that this is what that truly means. And this is what that would really look like. So getting them to see that is, 
is one of the bigger bigger issues that I think we end up coming to is is trying to reshape what society has told them this would look like like a hero <laughs> what, what does society say a hero is and just reshaping that this is what a hero really is this is what a hero really looks like changing um, his perspective yeah, yeah changing their perspective on what society has already put into their head yeah okay that's all